The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We've taken a look this morning at the German DAX and also the FTSE. As you can see, the usual patterns completing, especially the German DAX. It looks very, very similar to what we showed yesterday in the S&P, uh, where we had this uh, four-hour chart looking at the three drive to a top pattern. We made that uh, we made that high last night, folks, uh, in the S&P, so that uh, pattern was completed. And we're in the midst of the, the monsoon seasons here in uh, Tucson from June the 15th until September the 15th. We get these rains coming in from Mexico and also from New Mexico, and they are very, very torrential. We just had one about 20 minutes ago. It was so bad you can't even hear yourself think, but it's gone right now, so hopefully uh, it'll stay out. But uh, it was pretty violent last night. One of the things we were looking at last night, and I'm kicking myself in the rear end for not doing it, and that was, uh, in fact, it was in the middle of the night. That was one of the reasons why I didn't do it. It was uh, 2.30 in the morning here. But you notice here that uh, we had this. Uh, this is the Dow Jones. You'll see the ABCD pattern we had up here at 2007 and uh, 100. And now we've broken down you know, quite a bit from that level. That is a completed pattern. So we'll see where that is going to be out. Yes, the fire has been out for several weeks now. And we've had a couple of rains, uh, pretty good rains, Marshall. So everything is... Uh, is certainly uh, back to normal. Okay, uh, we have Rich Anderson's going to be our uh, guest today, as we promised. He's got some really great charts to look at, and I'm going to just share with you one of them because it's uh, it's got an interesting pattern set up everywhere, and I'll just bring it up to your attention. This is from uh, Rich Anderson. He gets it uh, uh, through uh, one of his friends. Hold on one second. Uh, it's done on the Bloomberg terminal. Give me a sec. This is the uh, chart of uh, Tesla. Let's get this up here so you can see it. This is the uh, Tom DeMarc sequential. You'll notice that it is in a sales zone right now, and it, the market is due to open higher because of the uh, in increase of the earnings or whatever it was. We hit a high of 17.16 last night in Tesla. The 78% retracement on Tesla from the high at 17.95 down to 14 and change was 1717 and we got to 1716 and we're trading about fifty dollars less than that this is what i'm looking at i'm just going to give you my two cents worth because i don't think anybody's going to be trading a a seventeen hundred dollar stock here so we'll take a look at it and we'll just see what's happening because here's here's what the uh, oh dear what happened to it i just had it shut the front door here it is here it is right now this is the uh, this is the uh, AI program for what Tesla should do today, and it's due to be higher. So I would be looking to sell it at the opening. The high, uh, the overnight high was actually 1716, uh, not. Uh, not 1720. Uh, that was my mistake. But I would be watching to sell it uh, on a higher opening. I don't know where it'll open. The ABCD on this one takes it to about 1650. So my guess is somewhere around 1650. But we'll we'll keep an eye on that just to see uh, to see how it transpires. You know, during the day. If you remember yesterday, folks, we were talking about silver. And uh, one of the things I'm going to walk you through the patterns just to show you how they repeat. This is your. You see the first retrace. And you see the second retracement. Now, guess what happens when you get a third retracement? You get what we call is a three drive to a top pattern. And it's a trading at 1663 right now. I would take that in a heartbeat. So let's just uh, you have to put you when you've got a when you've got a stock that's trading at 1663, you've got to risk about thirty dollars a share, three about forty dollars a share, three percent of that, which would be thirty nine dollars or forty dollars a share. So anything above seventeen hundred. 
I would probably be this would be a uh, bad trade and we'll see but the, the main thing is it should top right at the opening that's the key that we're that we're best betting on or we're making a, a sophisticated guess on so we'll we'll uh, we'll keep that in mind but look what look what happened to silver you see on that third drive last night look what happened this is a absolute perfect three drive to a top pattern between the 21st and the 23rd. It's absolutely perfect. You'll see the highs are 11 bars apart. That's 11 hours between each bar. Perfect A, B, C, D. And if you go back and look at what we looked at, uh, that was a swag. You're absolutely right. But here's the silver on this long-term chart that we've been watching for the last couple of days. Uh, we went right up to this level uh, again at uh, 23 uh, the actual high was 23.69 on that uh, little bit run up on that third drive last night. Uh, so it did go a tiny bit above it. And we're trading about a dollar an ounce below that right now. So whether that means very much or not, if we take a look at the gold, uh, gold, it, folks, the open interest in the gold is going nuts. People are coming into this market. So if you get a nice break of $60 a barrel, <laughs> $60 an ounce. I think it'll be pretty good here. Um, yeah, it is funny how the three drive pattern works. See, that's one of my favorites because it's got so many. Boy, when they fail, though, stand out of the way because they're really, really nasty is when they when they fail. We saw that in the NASDAQ. If you remember that the last week, you know, we had a beautiful three drive that it turned into a four drive, five drive, six drive. And, uh, you know, we went a lot higher because it was supposed to stop at 10,700. It went 300 handles higher to 11,000. So that's it is what's going. Yes, a barrel of gold would be uh, it would be quite heavy, but it would be very, very valuable. Someone asked me about the, the gold last night on an email is why I don't use bullion. And the reason why is they they can counterfeit. At that there's a whole bunch of they say about 20 percent of the gold that these dealers are working with now are basically titanium uh, with gold covering and that's uh that's pretty it's pretty bad whereas if you buy the the gold coins you know that the government pr produces or even well they don't do cougarans anymore and i think they still have maple leaves or 50 peso mexican but uh, those are easy to to assay and that's that's what you want to be buying you don't want to be buying bullion and also bullion and silver they charge you an arm and a leg you know to get it assayed whereas if you buy the coins they already know what they are they're 90% silver uh, and so that's uh, the main thing. So let's. Uh, I, I think I, I think it's it's tef. Uh, I thought it was titanium that they were using, but it might be tungsten Z. You're right. They both start with a T. And uh, anyway, we'll we'll see what happens with that. Oh, we've got the first part of the break. We're going to have Rich Anderson at the break, of course, to talk to us about these grains. Uh, don't touch that uranium because that turns into plutonium, and that plutonium is dangerous stuff, you know. Hey, we'll take a break here when this uh, music starts for our braking system. And then we get back. I think we need to talk about the U.S. dollar index because um, we are really close to the old um, dollar sign of the old three sevens coming on the slot machine. So uh, we got to watch that one really close, especially coming into the weekend which will be uh, very, very interesting to uh, to see. Okay, let's uh, see what... Uh, oh, here's a break. 877-927-6648. Hurry up and call before the lines are lit up. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. I'm going to post a chart here of old platinum here, give you a little story to go with it. Uh, we have a very, very dear friend across the pond, far, far across the pond out there in the old uh, Middle Eastern desert. Very good family friend. And you notice here that we had that 382 retracement down there at 790 an ounce in platinum. And uh, this gentleman actually bought a great deal of platinum. And last night, uh, when we were up, trading up around 970, uh, he dropped me an email. I just happened to be up at that time because of the rain. And he said, you know, what should I do? And I said, well, his original price objective is 1150 Well, he's up $175 an ounce, and he's looking for another $200 an ounce. And I suggested that, you know, you're halfway there, and you've taken out the previous highs, and there's some signs that maybe silver is at a major level and maybe gold's at a major level, but you should book something here. So he booked some at that 970 level. But he, I told him if you get a nice little sell-off like you did the last time, which was $50 an ounce, getting it down here to maybe about 922, you might want to take a look at it again from the long side, but book some profit. But here is the problem, folks. <laughs> I've had this happen a few times. You know, I've been very bullish gold for a while, and I got out of it yesterday, as those of you know, that uh, because of this move in the silver was one reason of that double number at 127.1618, and also uh, the move in the gold up to the 880 level, which was a big 1.618 expansion. And I, I have to respect those 1.618 expansions. But uh, one of the one of my very, very saddest experiences was at Drexel when uh, we were in gold and uh, we were getting out of it in January of, nine, of 1980. Uh, 1980. And what I did was at that time, 
Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that, too. Shucks. Uh, I'm going to do that next. Well, anyway, we'll take a look here. Anyway, what happened was uh, I had uh, a lot of customers, uh, over 100, and uh, two of those customers were very dear friends and, and very close friends that we've been running this stuff for about four years. And I got out of the gold at 7-Eleven. That was the number we were getting out. It was in early January. It didn't top until January the 20th at 8 65 That last 150 $50, those two gentlemen never forgave me for. And uh, they they closed their account, and they I, th I think one of them moved over to Dean Witter and gave a lot of it back. But they were really angry that we didn't get the last $150. And the, the, when it topped in January of 1980, it went down, folks, for 23 years. It didn't bottom until, well, no, it was more than that. It was 30, 32 years. It didn't bottom until uh, 2002. So uh, that's how long the bear market was in gold. So just remember, when you talk people out of these positions, uh, uh, they won't forgive you. And that was one of the reasons that, uh, you know, Drexel Always World uh, warned us that, you know, you can lose money for people, you can win money for people, people but if you talk, talk them out of something that wins and you talk them out of it, they'll never forgive you for that. So I try not to do that. But anyway, took profits. We're going to see whether it's going to do anything or not. That's neither here nor there. It's just another trade. So, folks, there is the trade of the day, folks. If you want to make money and absolutely can't lose, the trade of the day today is at 4 o'clock. Get into Byron, or to Byron, to Basil's show and listen to what the man has to say. He's got some of the coolest patterns out there. He does a great deal of research, and when he has something special like this, I highly recommend it. That's between 4 and 5.30. That's the best trade of the day, even better than the Tesla trade. So uh, that's my two cents worth. And trust Tesla will probably go up $200 a share today, but we'll have to wait and see. So, Eddie, that's what we're watching in the Platinum. Now we need to take a look at something else we've been watching very, very closely, and, we're, and that is this dollar index. I want to bring this up to your attention one more time here. Hold on just a second. We'll get this up here. All righty. <clears throat> Someone's at, hey, listen, I'm, I'm really serious about the about his uh, his show. That but it's really worth the worth the effort. Now here's where we were last night. We were at 94, 97. We got down to 94, 74. If you remember, I said 94, 61 was uh, a very very important number in this U.S. dollar index because if we break below that, it's going to be very very bad. So the next thing I did was I went in and I pulled up the daily chart. And I blew it up a little bit so we could see it just a little bit better. And remember, here's my two cents worth. This is all it is. And if you pay more than two cents, you've overpaid. Here is the dollar index. We'll get it up here. Here's over the last several months. You see the high we made in May? We came down 18 days, folks. And look what we did now. From the high we made on July the 29th, we've come down 18 days. So we're right in that ballpark. We got down to 94 um, 74 last night. We're trading at 95.13 right now. So this is an important bottom in here. There's another reason why I said, well, maybe we better lighten up on the gold a little bit. But uh, the gold still looks bullish long term, folks. And big increases in open interest in this run up here in gold when we broke above 840, 1840. So, uh, you know, there's some uh, silver did not. I mean, believe it or not, silver didn't even have open interest increases. It's been dropping in open interest. So that's not a very good sign of it. The gold has certainly got the open interest behind it. So we'll watch, uh, you know, watch it very, very closely as we go through. Hold on one second. The allergies have got me. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. Oh, by the way, I'm going to have a special session now on uh, uh, politics every day uh, here at 924 in the morning. We're going to have a special session on uh, on politics, and uh, that session just finished, so I hope you enjoyed it. Let's move on to uh, one of the other things that we've got here to pay close attention to. Uh, because uh, we're going to be talking to Rich Anderson about it. We're going to be covering Minneapolis wheat and Chicago wheat and Kansas City wheat. And uh, 
You'll notice here, this is the pullback that we've had in the, the, the Christmas wheat. And we'll be talking with Rich Anderson at the break to go over some of these things. He's got some really cool-looking charts uh, on uh, silver, too, that look interesting. And, and that chart that we got from Tesla uh, with uh, Tom DeMarc, that also came from um, some, from Rich Anderson. So that should be pretty good uh, you know, to watch. Would someone tell me the last price of, um, of Tesla so I can have a rough idea of the opening price? Because I don't have that... Uh, coming in as of yet so anybody that has the pre-market on tesla it should be about 60 should be about 1650 ah 1660 that's the number that i wanted for 1661 that's what i'm looking for and 1662 is close enough if it gets above 1700 it's wrong that's what it looks like from the cheap seats here in Tucson, Arizona, with the monsoons coming in. It's starting to rain again this morning, but right now it's very, very light. But um, we'll have to wait and see how it comes up. We will have Rich Anderson at, as, at the break here to talk to us about uh, a lot of different things. And uh, I know you'll enjoy him because he's got a great feel for what the markets are doing and nobody reads any more about this stuff except maybe mr z because boy i'll tell you rich really really follows uh, some of these markets uh with quite a bit um the short i don't know anything about the short interest in tesla it can't be very high terry because 72 percent of it is held by insiders and hedge funds and they don't do any you know they don't short against the box. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Rich Anderson. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Rich Anderson from Minneapolis, morning, Minnesota. Rich. Rich, how are you doing today? Doing great. Beautiful day out here. Uh, is it snowing yet, Rich? Or, or no, oh, it's past no. the 4th of July, so your fall must be in already, right? No, it's, we're still nice. It's 78 to 80 degrees. It's gorgeous. Sunny. Yeah. Hey, listen, you sent us uh, this chart about the number of stocks in the S&P 500. Do you want to explain to us uh, what you were looking at here, that screenshot? Uh, what, what, I sent you a lot of stuff last night. Tell, tell me again yeah, what I know, it is. I, I, let, let me give it to you here, Rich, and I'll tell I, I you just a second a, here. I don't because have a screenshot. So. It's, uh, You'll have to teach me how uh, to I know, do that someday. I'll look at your stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. You're, you're having I'm a, a hard time. Farmer, just, Larry. I, I, you know, Rich, is I've it, lost it, so let, let's move over to the silver, okay? Five times as much stock as they've been buying? Yes, that's the one. That's the one, yes. Well, well you know, there are like a thousand companies where if, if I run a company, I, I see all the numbers, right? And back in March, they were big buyers of stocks, right? And now mm -hmm. they're selling stocks five times as much as they're buying. That tells me that they're looking at numbers, and they don't look very good, and they say, bring the cash register. Okay. Because I can't okay, look can. at their books that they can, and that's what's mm -hmm. happening. No different than last week when I talked about all the bankers that had set aside, you know, whether it be Wells or J.P. Morgan. Eight to nine billion dollars a bank for uh, you know loans that may not you know be repaid. Yeah. Listen, we, you've got another chart that's really on. interesting, and that's this long-term silver chart that shows where we are in the silver market. My goodness, uh, we haven't moved hardly at all compared to other bull markets. It's uh, it's really looking quite bullish, isn't it? Uh, right, but you know markets. Markets don't go straight up, and, and, and Larry Williams' old uh, magic act where he took a rope, and this is the trend, and then he put it in his hands, and all of a sudden it was two different shorter ropes. And, you know, so you've got to die, define your time frame. And, uh, you know, that's the secret. Now, in, a, in the long term, absolutely. I mean, we're seeing things that are going on here, the expansion of the, of the federal balance sheet that mm -hmm. eventually will have to be – Inflationary. By the way, yesterday the Senate um, approved two uh, uh, federal, federal Reserve governors, and one of those, Judy Sheldon, I think is her name, actually in her testimony before the Senate talked about the gold standard and how money needs to be backed by something that you know we can have faith in. Mm -hmm. An interesting comment in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Listen, we've got a request here to take a look at some of these wheat contracts. And the first one we're going to look at, of course, here is the Minneapolis wheat. You want to explain the difference between these wheat contracts uh, for the folks, Rich, since that's your business and you know it as well as anybody? Well, I was a grain merchandiser and, and bought and sold cash wheat a long, long time ago. But Minneapolis wheat is grown in the upper areas in uh some in South Dakota, 52% will be grown in North Dakota this year. And then the eastern part of Montana, that's really where it is. It's a high-protein wheat, and it's used to blend in with the other ones. The hard red spring, yeah, uh, uh, that's called hard red spring. The hard red winter is in Kansas City, and that's a low-protein wheat, and that is a huge discount to Chicago and to Minneapolis. Minneapolis, because of its protein, is typically um, always a premium. The mm -hmm. weather hasn't been near perfect like it has been in other areas in North Dakota. So th that crop still could have some concerns, particularly if it did turn seriously hot again. But uh, mm -hmm. 
the Kansas City crop, you know, is, is at this point, the hard red winter has already been harvested. It's, what, 90 cents under Chicago? If I'm looking to buy something, that's what I'm looking to buy. Chicago has been a premium for multiple reasons. One of them, uh, China bought a couple cargoes of wheat uh, last week. But that isn't the preferred wheat. I think the if, if there's a trade right now, it's, you buy Minneapolis because of its protein premiums mm-hmm. and uh, weather concerns. But Kansas City is, looks to me to be the opportunity. I'm, I'm probably going to be looking at buying Kansas City South Chicago today. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a chart I didn't send you, but it had some of the same features of some of the other charts I sent you. And it caught yeah. my eye. You know, it, it, like Bryce Gilmer said, if it's pleasing to your eye, take a second look. Yeah, that's for sure. I remember the uh, chart from yesterday on the Christmas wheat, and it certainly looked a lot more bullish than we've looking at for Minneapolis and Kansas City. Now, is there a difference in the protein contents of these wheats that uh, that we look oh, at? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, Kansas City wheat, which is a hard red winter, you know, its protein mm-hmm. is in the 9 to 10. Minneapolis mm-hmm. spring, which is, is the highest protein wheat, and that can get up into the 13, 14, 15 percent, you know, if mm-hmm. it, 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 each year is different. And the millers need X percent protein to make their breads and, and of their different kinds of flours. So what they lack in Kansas City they, they buy the Minneapolis to blend off because if you were a baker, you'd know how important pro, exact protein is. And so, you you know, they depend on their flowers being exact, and that's how they do it. They blend high protein from the Minneapolis. Okay, that makes good sense. Now we'll take a look here at the, uh, the Christmas corn. Uh, does it have a chance to be a bull market this year or not, Rich? Uh, I don't think so. I mean... Uh, you know, the the bulls want to talk about China. You know, China corn this last week is up 25 cents. It was up 7 cents last night. But then the beans are up 50 cents. But China's releasing wheat reserves and rice reserves to help alleviate the price of corn. And, you know, with the tension we've got going on with China, I don't think they'll bail us out. You know, I've heard that the Chinese are can offer back uh, some of the Ukrainian cargoes of corn that they had bought earlier in the year, but of course they had no takers. <laughs> the, the corn market harvest will start early September. The, the main areas of concern were too hot right now, and it, we didn't have any major hot days in a row. And so mm-hmm. pollination, that critical event is kind of passing us. But the critical event in weather now for a crop is going to be soybeans in August. And mm-hmm. if the second week in the weather forecast has a high pressure ridge coming in, if that develops heat, that, that could make the beans come alive. But I just don't see it until after harvest. Uh, you know, I think we need a flush mm-hmm. or rinse, make new lows, and then we'll have some reason to talk. But the weather's been yeah. dang near perfect. It's like a greenhouse. Yeah. You know, if yeah. it's a, just a normal summer, and, and I, the August report will probably show increases in uh, the estimated bean yields by the USDA and the estimated corn yields because mm-hmm. it's been that good. Now, someone's asked a question about phosphate supply demand. I don't know. That's for the um, I'll make the crop go better, right? It's like a fertilizer, right? But uh, you know, that's I don't I don't see that as any talking point to the markets that will cause uh, any market movement. I'm not familiar with whether there's a shortage or not. There often is a temporary lo- mislocation mm-hmm. in phosphate nitrogen, but I don't know right now. Okay. Okay. Hey, stay with us, Rich. We want to ask you about China and what effect is happening. We'll be right back with Rich Anderson, folks. Gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, we're back. We're talking with Rich Anderson. Rich, tell us what's going on with China and all this stuff with the spying and the grains. And is anything going to happen positive with China? Are we going to go to war with them or what the heck's going on? Well, I... No, I don't think we're going to go to war with them, but we're kind of in an economic war. And, uh, you know, the, they close, they'll probably close our embassy in Wuhan, but basically it's all but closed. They're, they're fighting with each other's uh, best sleeves is what they're doing. You know, they're mm -hmm. like last week they talked about they weren't going to allow Martin Marietta to sell us anything. Well, Martin Marietta is a defense contractor and is not allowed to sell anything to China anyway. So they're fighting with the sleeves of their best. Mm -hmm. you know, in other words, but, you know, that somebody could make a critical error and misjudgments and it could, you know, could, could get it get a lot worse. The Chinese, uh, you know, their their demand for corn, I mean, their corn prices are at the highest they've been since 2015, 2016 marketing year. So, you know, mm -hmm. they're trying to relieve that pressure by getting rid of some wheat that's five years old. It's no longer good for human consumption. Some of the rice, they've released a little rapeseed. Mm -hmm. they, their hog crops, their hog hog herd got liquidated down because of the Asian swine flu, but they're now starting to bring that back, and their crushing markets, well, you can tell that by their crushing markets, when they crush beans, are there crushers in China making money? And the answer is yes. So they, they've got some real demand there. And so the, the currency in Brazil has been so cheap that Brazil's been the profitable place to buy just because of the weak currency since the first of the year. I mean, you can look at that. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that they're they're playing the waiting game, hoping that they can get a new administration that they can push around. That's that's what they're really counting on. Okay. So they're they're going to try and run out the clock and, and hope to get to play the the weak team. You know, get to play mm -hmm. a weaker team. And, okay. and within each side, the Chinese have hawks and they have doves, and and the the uh, U.S. administrations have hawks and doves, and the hawks seem to be in charge. For, you know. 
the hardliners seem to be in charge both in China and the U.S. right now. I see, Rich. Uh, when you when you talk about uh, you know the things with with China and stuff like that, as far as the exports and things, does that affect? Because you know they got 1.3 billion people, they got to feed them. Because I know some they don't have enough food sometimes. So no matter what happens, they have to be in the international markets buying something all the time, don't they? Uh, yes, that's true. But there's a, you know a lot of places in the world that they can buy it from. And, mm -hmm. you know, they can try and get by until the next crop year, mm -hmm. if, 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 if need be. But keep in mind, in the 60s, Mao decided that he was going to spend money on arms rather than food, and some 30 million people starved to death in China. It's yeah. kind of a different kind of political system than we have. Yeah, that's for sure. Which one is better, Rich? You know, Rich, I won't put you ask that question. Hey, Rich, tell us what's happening with the uh, police in uh, Minneapolis, if you don't mind. Are they going to be defunded? Does it look like that's what's going to happen? Well, I mean, you know, the actual people that live in these homes, they, they realize that the police are kind of like the fire department. Yeah, we don't need them around here right now, but if, if our house is on fire, we're going to need them. And, but... Are, are the uh, great brains of the city council apparently uh, want to have it voted on, and so then the people will vote whether or not that they want a police department. Well, let me tell you, if you don't have a police department, you got problems. I mean, just look over uh, Portland and Seattle. You know, some of these federal buildings, they spray paint them every night, and then they go and they, they paint them back their white color the next morning. And... You know, I heard one of the federal buildings had 46 different coats of paint on it from 46 days in a row of being defaced and then repainted. Wow. You know, you have to have, John, it goes back to John Locke and tacit consent. If you want to live in a society, you have tacit consent to the rules. You know, there's mm -hmm. common rules that everybody needs to abide by. That's, I see. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but it's in so many different cities. You know, you're talking about Minneapolis, and you're talking about Portland and Seattle, and uh, you know, even St. Louis. I mean, my goodness. I mean, it's uh, it's incredible. I mean, it, do you, do you think this is all orchestrated by by one entity, uh, Rich? I think there's a great deal of orchestration going on, and it's it's all to you know have political talking points that are going on on both sides. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, but it's it, it, this is not unlike 1932 in Germany when they started tearing down all the statutes. And then if you mm -hmm. remember, uh, six, eight years later, they had a lot of inflation where you know, they got paid three times a day to take a wheelbarrow mm -hmm. full of, of currency to buy a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hope that we've uh, you know, come to our senses before then. You know, so there are very few people have studied history, much less the economics and government, you know, most mm -hmm. people are first-level thinkers. They don't understand the unintended consequences of decisions. Yeah, well, well, I don't think it's good, you know, tearing down statues no matter what, because they were put there during a time that it was important and breaking down history, but uh, who knows. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, someone just dropped me a, a line here on Tesla this morning. Hey, Rich, I have a, a, you know, our good friend Basil Chapman's given a show today at between 4 and 5.30, and I know you're going to attend it, but he's got some great right. patterns and stuff, so it's. I think the folks, if they listen to that, you know, they'll have some, you know, really good information information because he has patterns that slip by a lot of different people so it's always interesting to see you know how this thing's going to work out i want to thank you for being with us today and uh, i appreciate the talk about the wheat of course and uh i'll probably talk to you later this morning silver too larry yeah oh i'm watching it i've got my, i've got my phone's rings off the hook all the time ever since i i exited the uh, 19 by it but uh, puts yeah. her in order right now all right. Hey, listen, thanks a lot, Rich, and have a safe weekend. And hey, by the way, Rich, we're having our first monsoons. The uh, We've gotten three telephone messages this morning and the TV message that uh, we're going to be under the gun here till about nine o'clock this morning with major, major storms. So uh, I might have to get my boat out. Hey, listen, thanks Maybe for joining us, buddy. You might get a quarter of an inch. 
Uh, yeah. you. <laughs> okay, folks, Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management, and we'll have him back again uh, very, very soon. Okay, let's move on here. Well, we got Tesla got down to uh, 1624. Uh, it opened at 1660. So that one started to work a little bit. Remember what I said, the trade of the day is not Tesla. The trade of the day is between 4 and 5.30 p.m. when listening to Basil, because you get more information off of that than you will get any profit off of Tesla. That's the two cents of what I can give you this morning. And I can really tell you with a great deal of confidence, that's a, that's a safe bet. Let's take a quick look here at something we haven't seen for quite some time, and that's the old Bitcoin. And you'll notice here, this is a look at this time period between June and July. We're in the middle of we're the end of July pretty soon. Look at this. We have been in this tight little $50 range here. It looks like we're starting to move out of it. We got to 9,500. Folks, if we clear if we clear 10,500 on this, uh, you can imagine what that price level is going to be because there's no there's no sell off. You see the sell offs that we've had all the way through August and March. They're not happening now. That means people are absorbing this stuff, and so it's very very important to pay close attention to it. And always remember, this is the one that we recommended when we did our day trading thing back on March the or excuse me May the uh, 30th I believe or 26 whatever day it was. That so you see that big arrow there when it was trading for. Uh, Six cents and it's got up to 14, still trading at 12. 877 927 6648. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard 
to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, I haven't talked about the bond market in quite some time, but uh, it got up to that 90, excuse me, 180.107 level. We're trying to get 180.29 right now. Uh, that's got an indication that we could be heading lower for the rest of the day uh, in the bond market. Let's hold on here for one second. I've got to do a little bit of busy work here to get this thing taken care of, and then I'll be right back with you. Hold on. And uh, tomorrow will be Friday. I do not have a guest for Friday. I'm trying to get Bill uh, Meridian as a cameo appearance, but I believe Bill is traveling back to uh, Vienna. And uh, I'm not 100% sure of that, but if he's, not, if he's available, he will be on. If not, we'll have him on early, uh, early next week. So let's remind ourselves to do that. Now, let's uh, keep in mind, folks, the importance of the price level uh, that we talked about in that U.S. dollar index because we went down and tested it very close to the 94.61 level. We got to 94.74. We're now a little bit above 95, and we're due for a rally. We're 18 days down from the high, and so we should get some type of a rally in here. And we'll see whether this is going to hold up uh, or not. That's the main thing. I did I did mention a little bit about the open interest, how positive it is for gold for the first time. This started to increase, remember, about a week ago. And, boy, we had some big increases these last couple of days. I'm talking, you know, 10, 15,000 contracts. And that is a lot. Usually it's only 1,000 to 1,500. So lots of people coming into the gold market. Uh, maybe these are the, you know, weak holders. I don't know. But by my gosh, it certainly looks like it wants to go up and touch those old highs from August the, of 2011, which was at $1,931 uh, per ounce. So that's a, a really important one to pay attention to. Okay, we've got the uh, see the s and P's trading at uh, 3266 not too much happening with it right now. We'll have to uh, see what's going on. It has a little upward bias here this morning, and then uh, uh, heads. it looks like it wants to head lower for the rest of the day, but that doesn't come in until after 11 o'clock. So we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.